All right, before it gets a little too late, I'm going to break back into my obsidian box to see what I can do. Let's see. This is kind of a good one. Yeah, all right. Yeah, I usually save the obsidian for Sunday night because that way I don't have to worry about the glass everywhere all week. I just have to worry about it for one day. I'll vacuum it up tomorrow, take a couple days off from flint napping. And I won't be neck deep in obsidian flakes. I should start the week with obsidian, but I ended up I end up starting the week with the most difficult stuff and then ending with the easy stuff. Which I, it's okay. I wish it was a better way to clean this stuff up. Or a faster way anyway. I gotta be really careful about cleaning this stuff up. So I tend to only nap obsidian on one day. You know, I try to limit it to one day a week. Did it do it? Yeah, I got enough of a piece out of it. Yeah. Okay. This is some of my favorite stuff, this black butter. Oh yes. Even though it is kind of snapping halfish, I like it. Yeah. All right, how, how long is this? Because the piece I want to make, yeah, it's good enough. I want it, I want it to be longer than three inches, so this this is longer than three inches. All right. Yeah, I lost a little bit too much off the tip, but that's how it goes. That's how it goes in the land of obsidios. Mm. Yeah, it's a little crunchy. Anyway, I still like it. Yep. I don't care. If it's a little crunchy. We'll get back to the eBay stone in our regularly scheduled programming in a few days. I usually take Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday off from doing flit napping videos, but not always. Just it's been that way lately because I need a break. I can do light flint napping, which sometimes I do. I've been testing stuff in my yard and I've got a bunch of crud that I need to get rid of. It's just sitting in the landscaping. I mean, I, I could leave it there, but it just looks kind of cruddy. You know, a bunch of little chunker flakes. I've been t slowly picking out the good stuff from my yard. I'm eventually going to pick all that stuff up, get rid of it, or store it away in a, a nice place for storage you know keep it in the if you keep it in the yard it gets all nasty and then when you want to go use it you got to wash it off hose it down and brush it off try to find where it's 
wandered off to. The birds like to flip over the flakes and look for bugs underneath the flakes. So these, <clears throat> I've noticed my flakes have traveled to different places. Oh yeah. And I've watched the birds flip the flakes. We've got a couple of wrens in the backyard. They love to flip the flakes over. Oh yeah. So I gotta pick all those up. A lot of them are the kind of stuff that I'm doing with the eBay stone. A lot of the stuff I have is landscape. Uh, oddly enough, ironically enough, it's bull rock landscape stone that I have in my landscape, in my yard. We have what we call a zero scape in my yard, which is a cactus mainly. Cactus and agave plants and a couple other plants that are native to the area, like mimosa or something like that. Anyway, you don't have to water it, so it's a zero scape. And I got my flint in there. But we also have trumpet vine encroaching into that area, and trumpet vine is very leafy and the flowers drop also it creates a layer over all my flint very very quickly the trumpet vine whereas the other desert plants they don't have as much leafy litter but i like the trumpet vine it attracts the hummingbirds and butterflies other types of birds that make little nests in there it gets all intertwined all the vines the trumpet vine gets inter intertwined within itself and it's good for nesting anyway I gotta clean all that up before it gets to be winter time That's the goal. No particular reason, it's just a, a goal that I can set for myself and then be rid of it. <clears throat> and only start collecting good stuff. But in storage, so it doesn't get all dirty and littery and uh, nasty. So what am I doing here? I'm just trying to make a biface, but not too flat, because I want this to be like uh, a fat preform. Now, after you've been napping for a while, sometimes it gets a little bit difficult to make these things fat. So what I got to try to do is not run too many flakes across the whole face. Like I want to do that, it's just a habit, I'm not supposed to, right? I'm supposed to just run little short flakes to the middle. I want to keep it fat, which I do. So, just little taps. Slowly, just get rid of the edges. Yeah. make it very regular because I'm going to try to do some fancy flaking if I can we'll see some obsidian is better for fancy flaking than others this seems to be pretty good the most important thing is it's cons it has to be consistent No, no surprises, no weird, weird uh, layering or pockets of stuff in there. Just nice and 
consistent. And not too crushy either. And definitely not snapping halfish. Some obsidians you just tap tap the lower end and it snaps in half. I'm sure you guys have experienced that before. It's no fun at all. Just when you think you you are nearing the end and you're fin trying to finish it up and you're doing the base work and you hit it like this. Like what I'm doing right now, and then right in half. Yeah, you don't want that kind of obsidian. It's better just not to deal with it. If you got a bunch of it, just move on to something else. What you will learn from bad stone is anger management. You won't learn anything about flint napping, but you will learn about anger management. But the, uh, the point is to learn about flint napping. Yeah. You can get into the bad stone later when you get good at it. Yeah. Test yourself. See how good you are. But in the beginning... If you are a... A craftsman extraordinaire then yeah you can start anywhere basically you're a craftsman extraordinaire you don't you're not bugged by challenges in the handicraft zone so to speak you can deal with it no problem yeah then you can start with poor quality stone <clears throat> you're not gonna have problems it's gonna be frustrating but you're not gonna have problems you get the natural inclination, extremely good hand-eye coordination, imagination and creativity. And you can adapt quickly. You know, go for it. Start with bad stone. But if you're deficient in any of those areas, which, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. Not everyone is a craftsman extraordinaire, so to speak. I recommend starting with good stone. Or learn to heat treat it, like I'm showing you during this heat treat episodes, these heat treat episodes. You can turn crud into good stuff. As a beginner, it'll make a big difference. <clears throat> oh, yes. So there you go. There's the, That's the prey form. It's still kind of fat, which is good. Now I'm just going to regularize it, and after it's regularized, I'm going to try to do some nice flaking. And yeah, that's a thinning flake. That's not no flute. That's a thinning flake. Thinning. Yeah. Okay. Nice and neat. All right. I need a little pause after that. A few minutes for station identification. I wish the TV would still say that. Or, and now a word from our sponsor. Of course, you get that on YouTube. And now, a word from our sponsor, and blah, 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 blah. I actually don't like it. But, they used to have some snazzy way of saying it on the TV from back in the day. Yeah. Alright. <clears throat> 
what are we doing? We're regularizing, which means we're going to do some tedious type pressure flaking. I can't see. It's too bad this really nice obsidian is not like a uh, a lighter color. I wouldn't mind like a gunmetal gray type buttery obsidian. I could probably see it better. You know, like a dacite, but you hardly ever see the good quality gray dacite. I haven't really encountered any good quality gray dacite. It's usually mid to low grade if it's gray. The color is excellent. I don't know. It's usually this opaque black stuff that's really good. Or the mahogany. Yep, yep, yep. The clear is also excellent. Or the smoky. Obsidian. The only problem with that is I can't see the the flakes on the clear or smoky stuff, and it gets everywhere. And sometimes it gets where it's not supposed to when I can't see it. Especially in my socks. That's why I got my gaiters on. Yeah, but it gets everywhere too. It gets up in my hair. Of course, it doesn't matter. This gets up in my hair too. I can't. I can see this, but it, if it's on top of my head, then it might as well just be clear because I can't really see it when it's in my hair. But uh, the clear stuff is also is more like this with long slim pieces there's very few of these long slim pieces associated with this kind of obsidian but with the clear or the smoky those shards can get long and thin and they are treacherous I think I still have a long and thin one and one of my fingers on my left hand you know the remnants of a long thin flake that I caught in my finger years ago. Back when I thought I did not need to wear a glove on my hand. Because nobody else was using a glove. Yeah. Anyways, it's getting more regular. I'm seeing it. Yeah, I just got to keep going. And make it more and more narrow until it gets to the point where it's like a little bit over an inch. So, you know, one by three. Yeah, I still got a lot to go. Uh, one by three is probably a good one inch by three inches is a good average, I suppose, for almost every archaic point. One by three in proportion and one inch by three inch in actual dimensions. Is a good preform for many archaic points. Not all, but many, especially at little dark points. Yep.
was using steel, wasn't it? Or was I using aluminum? Holy moly, I don't, I don't even remember. What did I reduce this down with? Aluminum or steel? So I'm going to go around and regularize it a little bit more with the steel. I actually can't remember if I started with steel or with aluminum. I think it was aluminum. Yeah. Uh, this has a little bit of finer tip on it so I can do these kind of longer flakes. Don't ask me why a, a finer tip is better for longer flakes. I'm not sure. It's not working there. But supposedly, a finer tip is better for longer flakes. No. It's not going to work unless I get adjusted to it. So Let's see if I can get adjusted to the... Steel, the finer tipped steel. That one was good, but for some reason I'm not able to do the smaller flakes. That's not good. I wanted to do a lot of the smaller ones with the steel. Let's see if I can. So I don't have to wear myself out with the pressure flaking. Looks like I'm going to have to use a lot of the <clears throat> pressure flaking to avoid the crunchy step fracturing. Well, let's see. A lot of times I can blow through the crunchy, crackly areas with the punch, the uh, horizontal punch, the indirect percussion, otherwise known as horizontal punch. In this case, there's vertical punch indirect also. But I can usually blow away a lot of the crunchy areas with uh, the indirect percussion. If I'm not trying to do a long flake, if I'm just trying to do short little flakes, it's usually pretty easy to do damage control and get rid of a bunch of crunchiness. All right. Hopefully, I got a little step fracture just then. Dang it. I can't do no fancy flaking if I'm going to have step fractures in there. Nope. Dang it. And the edge was prepared, was prepared really well and everything. Come on. I'm not being that much of a spaz. Let's see. I am usually a spaz, but I'm trying to be careful. I'm trying to be careful and make the contour smooth. I'm not doing a good job of making the contour smooth on the surface, on the face. Yeah, so there's one side that's usually pretty good, and then the other side is junkola. Direct percussion is good for removing larger sized flakes where needed. I need some right there. 
some larger flake removals to get it symmetrical. So it's relatively the same contour on both sides with no undo or no excessive fat spots and there's no easy solution all right It's just going to be, it's always difficult to get it nice and, and uh, regular. It's always a struggle to get it really nice and regular. That's why the some nappers grind it all down before they start to flake. And I'm trying to get it nice and regular with random flakes. It usually works if I'm very careful. I'm not really in the mood to be really, really careful. I was blowing through a lot of bifaces earlier, creating a lot of bifaces and just smashing through all the nodules that I have. This is a change of pace here, I'm trying to be more careful. It's a different mindset. Slippery. I still like it. Yep. Even though it's slippery, it's a little bit crushy. It's easy to scoop out too much on some of these flakes. These attempts to smooth out the surface, a lot of times results in a big scoop out but I still like it okay mm -hmm. it's just sometimes it feels effortless there's not much fatigue in doing the napping on this material other than mental fatigue the physical fatigue is not there I could nap this stuff all day yeah so to speak. I, I usually don't go more than five or six hours at a stretch when I'm doing my napping. I've been known do, to do two six-hour stretches in one day, but that's my max. I can do the rest with pressure. See, I try to get everything nice and even. Although, there's still some lumpy spots. But indirect percussion makes it easier to do this operation because I can take off large flakes. I don't have to be spending a whole lot of time with a bunch of little flakes. And just as long as I don't scoop too much out with one single flake in the wrong spot. It's faster with the indirect percussion. Okay. Even though it's dicey, it's risky. Sometimes it messes up. 
Yeah, it messes up, not me. Yeah. to I need to make another pad soon no I need to I need the other glove for this operation this is gonna get very very tiny flake hazardous When I do continuous pressure for a while, the flakes get in between the tool and my hand. They get between the, my, my hand and my leg. They flap in my face. I do have my reader glasses on. I use the, the lightest magnification possible. Um, I could probably go a little bit stronger on my reader glasses than what I use, but it messes with my depth perception if I use a stronger reader glasses than the weakest. I think mine is like a 1.25. It's good enough. I'd rather not be able to see exactly than have my depth perception all messed up. Depth perception is vital with the percussion, especially direct percussion. If you're doing direct percussion and you don't have good depth perception and you're wondering, why is my direct percussion so bad? That's, that might be it. You may not have a good depth perception for some reason. Either it's it's you, which you can't do much about that, but if you're wearing goggles or glasses that mess up your depth perception, you got to switch them out for something that it's not messing up your vision. Sometimes it makes a big difference. Yep. So I'm still just trying to make it regular. And get rid of any any step fracturings or little weirdnesses, fat spots, that sort of thing. I'm using the coarse grit on the obsidian just to knock off flakes. It's not really for grinding right now. I'm just knocking off flakes from the thin areas. I will grind it more carefully as I get closer and closer to the final stages. And the wind is picking up outside. Hopefully the dust storm doesn't blow in. I've got the windows open in my van. Yeah, just thinking about it, making me mess up. I don't know why I'm worried. I'm gonna get dust in there anyway. For those who know, you live out in the desert, you know about the dust. 
all of a sudden the wind picks up and and you've got dust everywhere. I can see a stiff pressure. I to grind all the way to the tip. All the way to the tip. The tip especially is all wonky. See if I can regularize the tip. Oh, it looks nice. It looks like it's going to flake nicely. Still have issues with stiff fracturing at the tip. Doesn't matter how nice the material is, I always get these little step fractures. Unless I'm really, really careful. Is it getting there? Are we there yet? We won't be there until I drop it at least 10 more times. Yeah. So freaking slippery. Now the flaking is not going to be perfect, but I'm going to try to do uh, as close to as close to parallel as I can without taking too much time and driving myself nuts. I'm still in the regularizing stage and getting used to what it takes to not make these little crushy step fractures. See that? Okay. I know I got room there, so I was just aggressively pressure flaking, but I can't be can't be doing that the whole time. All right. Let's see, what do I need to do? I don't know what I need to do to fix that. So I just try stuff. Maybe I need to sharpen it. Maybe there's some obsidian embedded in the tip that causes weird stuff to happen. Come on. Come on. Come on. Some of you are saying copper grabs better. Yeah, okay, fine. I wouldn't be having this problem with copper. Yeah, I know. I know. But I'm not going to use copper. It's too rich for my blood. Yep. Yeah. 
I wear down the copper a lot. I don't really don't care how much it costs. That's just an excuse. The reason why I don't use it mainly is because of the maintenance. I wear down the copper extremely fast. And uh, I get annoyed with the steel that I gotta sharpen the steel and I hardly ever sharpen it. You can imagine with copper. I should use some sort of mental discipline to get over that. Take some martial arts mental discipline courses or something. Figure out what I need to get rid of. All that stuff that annoys me. Or something. I say martial arts because might as well get something out of it instead of just sitting here listening to a instructor. I used to take Taekwondo. I used to be in Taekwondo. This is many, many years ago. So there's something about physical activity combined with your lessons that, that drives it home and you can remember it or it becomes second nature more easily than just sitting and listening to a lecture or taking a course on self-improvement. Self-improvement combined with some kind of exercise seems to work pretty good. A healthy physical state or physical development combined with mental development seems to work better than either one by themselves. I got a feeling I'm, I'm hopeless because of the ADHD. And I've been watching videos and doing research on ADHD. A lot of ADHD people, they can only do what they enjoy doing, right? That's one of the obstacles. If you don't enjoy doing it, the ADHD person is not gonna do it, no. I don't really have that problem as much as the shutting it down my brain shuts me down if I encounter anything that's that I feel is going to be a real problem it'll just shut me down so I can't do anything nothing nothing that I like nothing that I don't like I can't do anything It'll just shut me down. Now, caffeine will prevent a shutdown. But then my brain gets ticked off and it'll shut me down harder next time. So I gotta be, I've got to be very careful about what I do. So I don't get shut down harder next time. One of the favorite ways my brain shuts me down is <clears throat> it tells me, okay, it's nap time. You can't do anything except take a nap right now. Don't try anything. You won't be able to do anything except take a nap. So I take a nap. I'm going to wake up and it's a brand new day. Yeah. It's like the shutdown never happened. I don't feel that massive uh, 
that massive crash of the brain just trying to shut shut me down. All right. Do I get that with flint napping? Does it? Do I ever get shut down completely with flint napping? Only when it's too tedious. Yeah, if it starts getting too tedious, like with the pressure flaking, if I start feeling like it's just going nowhere, and I've been doing it over and over and over, yeah, my brain will just shut me down. Say, nope, that's it. No more flint napping, no more pressure flaking, no more nothing. That's it. You gotta go take a nap. And then I go, dang it. What am I doing to myself? That's the only time it really happens in flit napping though. I can usually flit nap no matter what my mood is. So it's not the mood really that matters it's the what I'm doing in the flint napping I gotta watch out what I'm doing during the flint napping because if it's not going well that's it all right so I'm getting to the point where I can start running some <clears throat> consistent flaking and the, uh, the smoother it gets, the more consistent that flaking gets, theoretically, as long as I don't mess it up. It, there, there is a possibility of me messing, messing up the flake pattern if I don't do every flake very carefully. It's kind of random right now. Because I'm doing a little bit of damage control as I go. If I'm seeing a stiff fracture or a thick spot, I will deal with it. Now can I run these all the way across? That's the thing. I probably won't be able to run them all the way across. Just have to go halfway on either side. Well, I shouldn't say all the way across. I should say, you know, past halfway. Can I run these past halfway eventually? Yeah, I can if I if I have a very regular surface and a very well ground edge. I've got to grind the edge a lot to push the flakes that far. <clears throat> Let me just, uh, I'm going to make it more regular by doing this technique here, just pecking at the edge and getting it straighter, and then I'll grind it really, really well, so I can push those flakes further. crunchy spot I gotta push a large wide flake through there and it messes up the narrow flaking unless I do it early get rid of any step fracturings I 
took my glove off of this hand because it was starting to bug me. The more narrow I make this preform, the easier it will be for me to run the longer flakes. But I don't want to make it too narrow because then it gets overly narrow toward the end, toward the last stage, and I don't want it to be overly narrow. <clears throat> All right, I don't want it to go below an inch, <coughs> inch and a quarter wide. Yeah, see, it's inch and a quarter. I don't want to get it too much. Uh, more I don't want to get it much more narrow than that okay go down to an inch and that'd be all right but that's it so any damage control has got to be done now now can I do the damage control at the same time as doing the flaking that is an option, for sure. But only after you've been doing this for a while. I have not been doing this for much, for very long. And it's the first obsidian point of the day. So not only am I at a disadvantage by not having a lot of obsidian under my belt this week, under my belt today I don't have much under my belt this week either yeah I can do the short flaking so I mean it, it's not terrible if I get it very narrow because then I, I know I can run these longer flakes across the narrow one But the object is to try to keep it wide enough or try to keep it reasonably wide so that you, I can improve my technique. It's harder to do a wide point with fancy flaking than it is to do a narrow point with fancy flaking. try it it's it's not straight the edge is not straight but I'm gonna try it anyway I don't know should I straighten it out first before I try that final pass yeah I should I should make it straight before I do the final pass so I'm not worried about straightening it later. I just focus on the final pass by itself. Did they do it this way in the past? How did they do it? No, they just got used to flaking it with regular flakes. Uh, I don't think they spent a whole lot of time on these. I, got, I think they got used to making them a certain way with a lot of flaking, and that's it. It didn't take them long at all. But with me, I got to take like an hour to make it look like I done it, like I did it in 15 minutes. Because I'm not used to flaking in this way. I'm used to big bold flakes and then sharpening it. That's it. I'm not used to contouring with a lot of little flakes.
So as I get further down, I got to push harder. Right? Yeah. Now the bulbs I'm doing are, are too pronounced. Eventually I'll figure out how to make these long flakes without big bulbs. And I'm pretty sure it's just my style of pressure flaking. I'm used to doing the big bulb pressure flaking thing because of the sharpening. These points you had uh, long flaking without a lot of bulbage. I don't know what you call it. Because they were concerned a lot with the contouring. I don't know why. is not stout enough. I'm getting crushing. Oh, come on. Yeah, it made me take a big old flake to get rid of the stiff fracture that was right there. I want to try to do smaller flakes or more narrow, not wide, big fat ones. The tip's got a fat spot on that side. I'll have to deal with it in a minute. Come on. These are not very narrow on that side. I created this fat spot here by pushing really hard there. I pushed through these really hard because I didn't want any more step fracturing. And it worked but I scooped out too much. So now I gotta go back to the tip and see what I can do. I'm sure it didn't matter on the real ones. Yeah, they didn't care too much. Still fat. Okay. Come on. 
I think I, I think I need to drop it eight more times, right? Yep, need to drop it a bunch more times. Like I said earlier, they probably didn't take this long to do it because they're just used to it. Me, I'm not used to this kind of flaking. Okay, Let's see what we can do. And they're kind of going across to the middle. Yeah, good enough. Yep, now it's just time to pick at the edge and sharpen it. Although I should do a pass on this side, right? Yeah. Hold on, we're not there yet. We're not there yet. It's an hour yet, I know, but we're not there yet. Can't see. All right. The wires, the wires are all messed up. Where was I? What I'm doing is I'm trying to make the edge regular. See, you got little pieces sticking out, sticking out, sticking out, sticking out. I guess what you call those deltas, I'm just calling them sticking out places. Yep. Places where it's sticking out. So much grinding. Can't think too much about the flaking because if I do, I get a step fracture. So I just gotta blast through the flaking and hope hopefully it looks good.
No. Not like that. All right. Okay, so now I just sharpen it. Now these things had concave bases, right? Let me think. They had ground edges too. Let's just do the base first before I sharpen it. Is the base too wide? I'm doing this by memory. I did look it up before I did the video. Some of these have very narrow bases. I'm going to try to drive some thinning flakes up, up the middle here. Right? Right. Inning flakes. I think I might narrow this uh, the stem area a little bit, make it more narrow here in a minute before I grind it. Where I grind the edges, sides. All right, let's see if we can do some nice pressure flakes. Yeah, that was a good one. Oh, that was a good one too. Oh yes. Okay, so we got thinning flakes from the base on both sides. I'm going to put a little bit of constriction on the sides here and then grind down the sides a little bit and then sharpen up the blade. There's still marks from the the grinding. Let me let me sharpen the blade first and then I'll Put the constriction in at the stem. Let's see. Where is my? Sorry, headphones, guys. With the file noises, I'm doing file noises. Come on. Yeah, 
sharpening this type of flaking is tedious. I don't want to ruin the, the flake pattern, so I, I got I to use extremely small flakes to sharpen it. Which is okay, it just takes forever. Yes, good enough. Can you see? Probably can't see. I don't know what to do. Can't see. Yeah, it's not perfect. I'm not going to worry too much. All right, now I'll just make the sides more constricted I'm going to thin it down a little bit more. I got a lump right here. I'm going to send a couple flakes in there. <clears throat> I don't know. We'll see. I'm going to send one flake. If it doesn't look good, I'm going to I'm going to stop. Yeah. I don't know. Let's try another one. Uh, let's just, I'm going to finish sharpening it. That was that flake right there. It's a little bit too wide. I was hoping for a narrow one, but I haven't gotten the hang of doing the narrow flaking. There's a trick to it or something. Got these flakes fairly narrow but not narrow enough. So 
I'm just, I'm just regularizing it and then, then I'll grind it again. So yeah, I probably could have done this pass a little bit better, but the other passes look pretty good. for a little bit longer flake right here just hold on not there not quite there yet I can see where I can take a flake or two I don't know yeah okay Get rid of some of that fat area. Now I'm just getting rid of the dull spots on the blade. Regularizing it on the stem. Grind it a little bit. Okay, so I put a, I put some more flakes in on this side. Okay. All right, let's see. Clean this up a little bit. So yeah, that was actually not bad. I didn't mind that one. Maybe I'm getting more used to doing the tedious flaking, but that one wasn't too bad. So 
So it's not thin, right? It's what they call biconvex. But this is thinned down right here at the at the base. Let's see. Four shaft. Yeah. Okay, so <clears throat> thinning flakes up from the, the base. Stem has ground edges. I tried to do sequential flaking. They don't look like they're going all the way across. I think some of these had flakes that went all the way across, right? I don't know. I gotta look again. But that's it. It's a nice material. I really like it, so I enjoyed it mainly because of the material. I'm trying to get a good photo of the flaking let's see without natural light it's hard all right that's it